Hello, our lords. Hope you're having a good week. Just wanted to connect with you around a few things. The first is thank you so much for uh, leaning into this study on Revelation, where this Sunday we'll be looking at Revelation 17, uh, the great prostitute and the beast. We made it through Revelation 16, the seven bold judgments, and we'll touch on the last two. But I just want to commend you and thank you. We're that kind of church, and you're the kind of people that are digging into the Word of God and seeing that even if it's challenging stuff, it is rich and rewarding. And this Sunday, I just want to say this, as we look at Revelation 17, Jesus is Lord, but he also has a bride. And so Revelation 17 is going to be looking at the Antichrist satanic system that's kind of a metaphor for this great prostitute. And really, it's not even about that. Satan can do nothing but imitate and parody Christ. And Jesus has a beautiful, pure, magnificent, powerful bride. And so that's the point of this. We're going to be looking at Satan's counter bride. Everything that we're seeing, there's an unholy trinity, an unholy kingdom, and now there's an unholy bride, this uh, prostitute that seduces the nations into idolatry. But it is a rich, beautiful passage. Related to that, I want to continue to encourage you to have daily time with the Lord in the scriptures. We talk about Acts 2.42. The early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship with one another, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And we do the same thing. So I encourage you over the summer, with everything that's going on, make time to sit at the Lord's feet, listen to him, through his word. The last thing, it is summer. And so we've got some summer groups lined up and I encourage you to, now that COVID is behind us, plug into these groups and then be thinking in the fall about what the Lord might want to uh, do in you and through you. I had a lunch with Reed Rutlinger recently and he had a great insight, and he is just sensing that the C groups that we've had recently have some extra energy to them. And so I want to encourage you to think about, might the Lord want you to start a C group, a community group, uh, along with the wide variety of other choices that we have? The good thing is, if you're participating in a C group, there's an on-ramp and an off-ramp. So you're not leading that indefinitely. You could lead a C group for one session or two, could be, you know, three months, could be, if you want to lead it longer, that's fine. But I just sense that the Lord is going to be deepening uh, community, uh, especially this fall. And I want to make sure that you have friendships forming and you're studying the scriptures and doing life together in community. So... The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, our Lords. Love you.